All right, guys, in today's video, we have more PlayStation news and information to go over and talk about. Before we dive into these topics, do me a big favor, hit that like button to help this video out and show your support. And we are on our way to 100,000 subscribers here on the channel. So if you're new to the channel, make sure you hit the subscribe button. I would appreciate that as well. We're starting here with some announcements that were made during the Summer Game Fest. And we're starting with, I think, something that was kind of expected but the way it was revealed was certainly unexpected that being death stranding director's cut coming to playstation 5. now the reason why i say this is unexpected is because it's been rumored for some time that death stranding was going to be getting some type of playstation 5 extended and enhanced edition but if you watch this trailer and you look at the way that this was done it was certainly very unique and a big homage to the metal gear solid series and you know a big nod to metal gear solid fans but just talking about death stranding director's cut this is probably going to be a full-fledged playstation 5 enhanced version of death stranding that takes full advantage of all of the playstation 5's features obviously enhanced visuals maybe some ray tracing There'll probably be multiple ways you can play it, like a fidelity mode or a performance mode. They will take full advantage of the DualSense controller, which I think is amazing. Considering the gameplay of Death Stranding, I think that they could do some special things with the uh, DualSense controller. And, uh, you know, some people are wondering if it's going to be a free upgrade. I highly doubt it will be. I think it will be very similar to what we're seeing with Final Fantasy VII uh, remake integrate and it seems likely it's going to have some type of new content as well i also want to mention here that jeff Keeley seems to be hinting at what could potentially be the much anticipated playstation event we're all assuming again that sony is going to be doing an event and jeff Keeley revealed during summer game fest that the full reveal for death stranding director's cut is quote just weeks away unquote now, of course, Kojima Productions could decide to show off this gameplay reveal or whatever it is they're going to show on their own, on their social media accounts. That's always a possibility. But if you think about the timing and you think about the fact that this game is marketed alongside the PlayStation 5 and Sony, it seems likely he's subtly letting us know there will be some type of an event. Um, and I want to make sure to talk about the Metal Gear references that we're seeing in this trailer. Obviously, it just oozes Metal Gear Solid. I thought this was an amazing thing that Kojima did, and it has led to speculation that, oh, maybe this is some type of low-key confirmation or tease of something Metal Gear Solid related coming from Sony, or maybe Sony and Kojima. Others took it that this was Kojima's way of letting us know that he's moving on from the series. If you look at the way Sam kind of puts the box back on the shelf and walks away from it. And I could see that as well. Some people were mentioning that if you look at the box, it actually says something along the lines of handled with care or handle with care, something like that. And some people are thinking that maybe this is... Kojima's way of giving his blessing to potentially Blue Point games. We've heard that they're apparently remaking Metal Gear Solid 1. It's a rumor. We do not have confirmation of that, but, you know, maybe this is his subtle way of kind of, you know, passing the torch, I guess you could say, and giving Blue Point games the uh, nod of approval, you know, um, handle this with care. It's hard to say. I mean, look, I would walk away from this assuming this is just an homage to Metal Gear Solid and Kojima kind of tipping his hat to all of the Metal Gear Solid fan base. Um, it, you know, I got very excited when I saw this and I want to believe, I want to believe that we could see a full-blown Metal Gear Solid remake from Blue Point Games. I did find it interesting that if you look at the general theme of this trailer in regards to it trying to mimic Metal Gear Solid, it seems to be mimicking Metal Gear Solid 1 in particular, which I did find interesting. But nonetheless, you know, I thought this was a really cool thing that Kojima did and it put a big smile on my face when I saw it. So I'm very interested to learn more about uh, Death Stranding's director's cut. It's worth noting as well that Kojima did talk briefly about his new project, but he was very, very ambiguous about what it is. He was basically talking about how the development environment has changed dramatically and he said something about aliens. So I really don't know <laughs> what his next project is going to be. But uh, he did talk briefly about it. He just didn't really reveal anything of significance. So 
There you go. We're going to move right along, though, and talk about some former Call of Duty developers announcing a new studio called Deviation Games that is actually partnering with PlayStation on an innovative new IP. So it says a number of former Call of Duty developers from Treyarch, including former Zombies lead Jason Blundell and Dave Anthony, have announced Deviation Games. Deviation Games is also a brand new developer working with PlayStation on a new IP. Revealed during the Summer Game Fest 2021 kickoff live showcase, this new game is built with quality and innovation at the core, with Sony going more in-depth on the PlayStation blog. It says the game is underway, however, details are scarce right now, but the team are looking to make something fresh and brimming with innovation like you've never experienced before. The team is already at 100 developers and is continuing to grow with full funding and financial security from Sony. Now, I think that this is a pretty significant announcement, and I noticed that people are actually really excited at the potential of what this new game could be because, you know, when you think about Call of Duty, I know that... A lot of people are not Call of Duty fans, but a lot of people do look back fondly on a lot of the Treyarch developed Call of Duty games and especially the Zombies modes. And you look at the people who are getting together and have formed the studio, you know, this this is the group that kind of made that, you know, and is responsible for that. And this is something we're seeing more and more with Sony as they're partnering with these new studios that are being formed by industry veterans and a lot of these industry veterans are responsible for some of the biggest gaming franchises in gaming history and they're being tasked with making a new IP and Sony is funding them. So it's hard to get too excited about these games such as what we're seeing here with Deviation Games, Firewalk Studios is another one as well as Haven Studio uh, formed by Jade Raymond. It's difficult to get excited about these games because they're so far away uh, but you know, the potential is obviously there and Sony believes in whatever these games are that they're pitching to them. And I actually love to see this. You know, I'm going to be very interested, very interested to see what these studios and what these developers end up coming up with. And um, I think Sony is making some big investments here. Potentially, you know, one of these studios could end up developing the next hit game that's, you know, on the same level as Call of Duty or uh, Halo or Destiny or Assassin's Creed or something like that. And it's interesting to see Sony kind of investing in these studios this way. So just wanted to let you know about that. I think that's pretty cool. It's going to be interesting to see if Sony continues to bring on even more studios that are being, um, you know, built from the ground up by industry veterans. Uh, we're going to move on from that, though, and talk about something that I don't want to spend too much time on, but I definitely had to take a moment here to highlight it. It's about the whole PlayStation RDNA conversation. Yes, yes, I know. There's really no reason to be talking about it right now, but I just, I have to point this out because believe it or not, and I know it may be hard to believe, there are still people arguing about whether or not the PlayStation 5 is actually an RDNA 2 console. I think it's absolutely ridiculous to even be having this conversation because in my opinion, it doesn't matter at all. I don't care what RDNA the PlayStation 5 is. Games look absolutely phenomenal on it. I mean, just take a good look at Ratchet and Clank. But this is why I actually wanted to highlight this because if you go on uh, the Radeon RX official Twitter account, which has over 725,000 followers, they actually put out a tweet that highlights Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart. So Eurogamer.net, as an article that says Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart on PS5, this is why we need next-gen exclusives. And Radeon RX, the official Radeon RX Twitter account, quote tweeted it and said, we are proud that our groundbreaking RDNA 2 and Zen architectures helped enable incredible next-gen PS5 experiences like Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart. And I had to be sure to highlight this because you know, if you didn't believe the CEO of AMD, Lisa Su, if you didn't believe Mark Cerny, the architect of the PlayStation 5, when they told you that, yes, the PlayStation 5 is RDNA 2, well, here you go. Now you have another slap to the face, honestly, to those who just continue to try for some reason that I simply can't understand to downplay what the PS5 is doing for games. I don't think there's any reason to downplay it. I think we should be excited. I think you should be excited at what you're seeing with Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart. I'm excited for it. It looks incredible. 
got to really admire what Insomniac Games was able to achieve. And I just think that this goes a long way in completely shutting down that, you know, unnecessarily negative um, narrative about the PS5. I mean, I don't mean to come off defensive, but I mean, I know you guys see this. I know you guys see that there are groups of individuals who try to go around convincing people like, oh yeah, you know, the PS5, it's RDNA 1, RDNA 1.5. Like, first of all, who cares? Second of all, you're completely wrong. You're, you're just wrong. So there we go. Just wanted to uh, make you guys aware of that. But we're going to close out this video similar to the way Jeff Keighley closed out Summer Game Fest talking about Elden Ring. Yes, it was rumored for some time that Elden Ring was going to be part of Summer Game Fest. And I'm not going to lie to you. I think Elden Ring completely saved this show. And the wait was worth it, in my opinion, because they revealed the game. They showed a new gameplay trailer and it looked absolutely incredible. I'm a huge Dark Souls fan. I mean, Metal Gear Solid is my favorite gaming franchise of all time. Dark Souls is number two, hands down. Absolutely cannot wait for this game. So here's some interesting things we learned about it. So we learned that the game is actually going to be releasing January 21st, 2022, which is really not that long of a wait. That's about seven months. So considering how long we've been waiting to just see a new trailer of the game, I think we will be able to make it. Uh, it was also revealed that there will be a free next-gen upgrade. So if you do buy the PS4 version and you eventually upgrade to the PS5, you will be entitled to that free upgrade. And I think that that's actually a really cool thing that they're doing. We're learning that there's going to be a wide variety of weapons and skills and online play is confirmed, which is definitely exciting. There's a lot of information out here about the game. And frankly, I'm not going to be able to cover it all in this short video. So I'll actually have some articles linked down below that you can go check out and read up about it. But I'm very excited for Elden Ring. I also want to mention one last thing here in regards to Elden Ring. Jeff Keighley tweeted out about two hours ago, uh, shortly after the Summer Game Fest concluded. And he said, what you may not know is that uh, Miyazaki-san and From Software wanted to place it at the end of the show as a reward for fans who watched the whole event and to use the anticipation to lift up slash elevate all games throughout the showcase, a true class act. And I just thought that that was a really cool thing. Uh, very respectable. Uh, they didn't have to do that. There's no doubt that a lot of people probably dipped out of watching the show before it actually was revealed. But, you know, as I said, it was definitely worth the wait and I'm I'm very much excited for Elden Ring. So that's pretty much going to do it for this video, guys. Be sure to leave all your thoughts down in the comments below. I will be very interested to see what you guys have to say. Again, leave the video a like, subscribe if you're new, hit the bell notification icon, and feel free to share the video out on top of all that. But until next time, guys, take care.